It's April the 29th, and the weather is perfect to start the tow of the massive North Bray jacket away from Ardesia and out to the Bray field. After almost four years of design and construction, the 22,500 tonne structure is finally on the move. Forty hours later, the jacket has arrived and is now ready for launch. Its precipitous dive to the seabed is arrested only by its own buoyancy and that of the temporary flotation tanks, which provide an additional 11,000 tons of upthrust during the launch and the upending that is to follow. You know, Watson's name is Simon. He, he blessed it and all the men have worked on it, so it's uh, had a good blessing for a good start. <laughs> Ballasting the jacket is controlled from this capsule while its position is maintained by mooring wires and tugs. The upending continues for several hours. When it's firmly set on the seabed, the first task will be to remove the temporary saddle tanks. By releasing hydraulically four underwater connectors, the tank is freed of the structure. The vessel carrying out all this work is the Hermod, one of the semi-submersible crane vessels owned and operated by Hirama. With two large cranes and a crew of 250, it's well equipped for the tasks ahead. Seven days after launch, the task of securing the jacket gets underway with 32 piles like this. Each one is 84 inches in diameter and weighs over 300 tons. Each pile is stabbed and lowered through a series of guides like these at the top of the jacket. The long piles are handled with ease by the enormous cranes on Hiram's vessel. Despite the jacket being almost 50 meters wide, all 32 piles can be stabbed from one position of the vessel. The lowering continues until the pile comes to rest inside its sleeve at the base of the jacket. The handling tool is then removed. Underwater hydraulic hammers like this, itself shaped like a pile and weighing over 300 tons, are used to drive the piles deep into the seabed. A 
and sometimes it needs a good old steam hammer. Whilst the piles are grouted to their individual sleeves, preparation for setting the module starts. First, the infill legs of the module support frame, the MSF, are set in place with four separate lifts identical to this. When the 16 legs have been welded out, all is ready for the setting of the two MSFs which have now arrived in the field. Lifting the first of the 3,200 ton modules proceeds smoothly as the SFCV rapidly deballasts to gain height to lift the module clear of the cargo barge. Well, with some exceptions. The length of the MSF, some 93 meters overall, dictates that the vessel's two cranes are used. With the lift complete, the slings from both cranes are laid back down onto the roof of the module. Making the most of a spell of calm weather, the vessel up anchors and moves to the other side for the lift of the second MSF but not before the last of the flotation tanks have been removed from the jacket. With the tanks out of the way, the lift of the east side MSF soon follows, again with a dual crane lift. With the load secure in the cranes, the SSCV is slowly moved in on its anchors until the module is right over its final position. It is then lowered, the legs finding their final guidance from stabbing cones. Each of these slings typically weighs 30 tons and is 12 inches in diameter. With the lift in place, the welding of the legs and eight diagonal braces continues apace. Access to these workstations is not always easy, as this inspector found out. By mid-June, six weeks after launch, the east side modules are in place and work continues with the build-up of the west side. Here the lower accommodation module is being installed.
the drilling modules arrive on what must surely be the calmest day of the year. The lift of this module calls for precision work as the pedestal crane is lifted past the SSCV's boom. And with a little persuasion from the bumpers, is installed. The generator module arrives. Weighing in at 2,400 tons, this is the heaviest module to be lifted with a conventional four point lift. A small crew always transfers to the platform before each lift, including the superintendent, who is responsible for seeing the module down into position. Out of the 32 modules, perhaps the most novel lift is that of the drilling derry. At 180 tons, it's not because of its weight, but the fact that it's installed in one piece. First, it has to be rotated from its horizontal transportation position. Once vertical, it's installed high up onto the substructure. With this lift over, the platform is well and truly topped out. All modules are in place and the platform is complete. On June the 27th, the vessel moves away and re-anchors at the north face. All that remains is to set the flare structures. Right on cue, the flare jacket arrives. But predictably, it's lifted off the barge in the middle of the night. By first light, it's already well on the way to being upended. This, the lower sling, will shortly be released remotely, allowing the second crane to place the jacket. With the sling clear and a last minute check, the flare jacket is set. The bridge and flare tower soon follow and complete the final picture. 61 days after Hiruma's arrival, the task is finished and the Hermod makes way for the hookup accommodation vessel. But that's another story.